is, as you've heard Jordan pray, and as you are well aware, this Tuesday we have a presidential election. You'll know that. I would say there is at least a 50-50 possibility that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come before Tuesday. Because I'm thinking perhaps He doesn't want either one of those folks to be our president. So, this may be your last Sunday. Maybe our last Sunday morning together. So let's listen today intently in view of our eternity. You agree with this? Who we are here, who we are here, and what we are here, and how we are here, will determine where we will be and how we will be in the hereafter. For example, if here, here, we are faithful to God, then in the hereafter, we shall receive a crown of life. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. If here, in this life, we did not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, then in the hereafter, we shall be punished with everlasting fire. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. If here, where we are here, if we are lukewarm, if we're neither hot nor cold, if we're not zealous for the things of God, then in the hereafter, that's from Revelation chapter 3, 14, 15, and 16. How we are here determines how our hereafter is going to be. This morning, I'd like for us to take our spiritual temperature. I'd like for us to figure out especially if we're hot, if we're cold, if we're lukewarm. And here's the way I'd like to proceed. I'd like to give us a list of things that may be an indication that if we have these things in our lives or we don't have these things in our lives or if we are living a certain way, if we have this, it might be an indication that we are lukewarm and in fact later will be spewed out. Let me explain how this hopefully is going to work. I love those redneck jokes. Because I are one, I think. At least I used to be one before I graduated to northwest Alabama. You remember, you remember some of these? If the people at Salvation Army, if they decline to accept your mattress, you might be a redneck. If you think a turtleneck is a key ingredient for soup, you might be a redneck. If you've ever made change in the collection plate as it passes by, you might be a redneck. If you own at least 20 baseball caps, you might be a redneck. I would say if you own more baseball caps than ties, you might be a redneck or you're counting down your head. If you have ever been fired from a construction job because of your poor appearance, you might be a redneck. This is one of my favorites. If you come home from the garbage dump with more stuff than you took with you to the garbage dump, you might be a redneck. 
I am one at times. Maybe you are too. Now, that's the pattern we'll follow as we think about something really significant. Are we lukewarm? Are we uh, Laodicean? That's the folks that were called by Jesus lukewarm in, in Revelation chapter 3. I'm, I'm going to, as I list these things, I'm not asking that all of you agree with all of these. I'm just asking you to think. I'm asking you to consider these. And many times in the lesson this morning, I will use the word you, but you know me well enough to know when I say you, I mean me, I mean we. This is not a sermon just targeting you individually. You're included. But it's for Jeff. It's for all of us. So, let's get into it. If you had rather watch a baseball game or any type of game, if you'd rather do that, then assemble for worship with your forever family to glorify God. If you'd rather watch a ball game, you might be lukewarm. This is starting well, isn't it? If Sunday is the only day of the week that you open up your Bible, you might be lukewarm. If you rarely or never have to pick up one of these return dishes that we make announcements about. You might be lukewarm. If you know what's on TV on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, you might be lukewarm. If you're on time for work, if you're on time for ball games, if you're on time for various appointments in your life and yet are routinely late when it comes to worshiping God, you might be lukewarm. If you are dressing to reveal rather than to conceal, you might be lukewarm. Now think with me on this one. If you had a meeting with your boss tomorrow and he said, here's how I'm going to figure out, or she said, here's how I'm going to figure out your salary. Moving forward now, I'm going to give you ten times what you put in the collection plate in church yesterday. And if that would disappoint you, if that amount would discourage and depress you maybe, you might be lukewarm. If the only church showers, I'm talking about bridal showers, talking about wedding showers, you've heard of them. If the only ones you attend are for you, thrown for you, or for a member of your family, you're not going to the other ones, you might be lukewarm. If the only time you reach out to an elder is when you are aggravated about something. You might be lukewarm. If you routinely miss worship assemblies for things you would never miss work over, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If the doctor says you've got one week left to live and that news prompted you to make dramatic changes in your life, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you are a different person behind closed doors in your home, if you're a different person at work, if you're a different person at the ballpark, then the person we are when we are gathered here. If your language is different out there than here, for example, attitude different there than here, for example, you might be a lukewarm Christian. 
if you keep score. If you keep score of wrongs that you have suffered, legitimately suffered. If you keep in record, keep in score, you may be a lukewarm Christian. <laughs> if you can look around this auditorium now and not see even one person that you have brought to Christ, you may be a lukewarm Christian. If you can look around the auditorium now and see even one person that you have bashed with your tongue, or if you can see one person that you've ever been unkind to, or if you can find one person that you have withheld your love from, you might be lukewarm. If the only time you ever pray with your family is just before you eat, you might be lukewarm. If you're watching television shows and visiting various websites on the internet that you would never watch or that you would never visit if Jesus were sitting beside you, you might be a lukewarm Christian. All right, get ready for this one. If you cheat on your taxes, or if you cheat in school, or if you cheat when you fish, or when you hunt, or when you play golf, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you listen to a bad report about a brother or sister. By bad report I mean gossip. If you listen to a bad report about a member of your forever family. And you automatically believe it to be true. You might be a lukewarm Christian. And let me say this. If you listen to a bad report. If you listen to gossip about a brother or a sister. Just listen to it. You might be lukewarm. If you allow a hypocrite to affect, to affect your ability to worship, if you allow a hypocrite to in any way come between you and your God, you might be Lukewarm. May I ask, do you allow the hypocrites at work to keep you from work? Do you allow the hypocrites at Walmart to keep you from Walmart? Do you allow the hypocrites in the stadium to keep you out of the stadium? If your family, your friends, those who know you best, if they would be shocked to hear you say the words, I was wrong, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you. If they'd be shocked to hear that kind of verbiage coming out of you, you might be lukewarm. If people would be surprised to see you in Bible class, you might be lukewarm. If you pout when you are not praised, when you are not appreciated, you might be lukewarm. If you have not, if you have not kissed your spouse today, if you have not hugged your children today, and you had an extra hour to do it today, you might be lukewarm. If during the worship assemblies you give dirty looks to these young mothers, and these young fathers, whose babies sometimes act like babies, who sometimes sound like babies, if you give those folks dirty looks, 
You might be lukewarm and you are a redneck. <laughs> All right, get ready for this one. If lascivious dancing, if lascivious dancing, and a lot of dancing is lascivious. By the word lascivious, I mean what Paul means in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. If we believe that lascivious dancing, dancing which leads others to have impure thoughts. Now I'm not saying all dancing, you didn't hear me say that. I said lascivious dancing. I said dancing which leads others to have impure thoughts. And again, a lot of today's dancing does in fact lead people to have impure thoughts. Let's not be in denial about that. But if that kind of dancing, if that seems like a good idea, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you look for opportunities to gripe, to complain, to criticize, to be offended. If in traffic, you're that guy, you're that gal who's always looking for reason to blow your horn, you might be lukewarm. If you expect other people to meet your needs, but you fail to meet the needs of others. If you expect to be visited, if you expect to be encouraged, if you expect to be fed, but you do not do the same for others, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If gambling seems like a good idea, if supporting an industry that has destroyed so many families, if that seems like a good idea, you may be a lukewarm Christian. If drinking a beverage that has the potential to destroy your body, the potential to destroy your influence, the potential to destroy your family, the potential to destroy your ability to effectively function. If that sounds like a good idea, putting that in your, in your body, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you are keeping secrets from your spouse, if you are keeping secrets from your children, if you are keeping secrets from your parents, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you are not tirelessly seeking to involve your children in the life of the church, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If your children think that you care more about their ball games than their Bible classes, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If your children see that you seem to be more interested in their athletics, their academics, and their arts than their relationship with Almighty God, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you have never obeyed the command, James 5, 16, to confess your sins one to another, then either you are perfect or you are a lukewarm Christian and we ain't perfect. We're just not. If little children don't like you, and you don't like little children, you might be lukewarm. 
if you support with your dollars movies that promote, that feature, or that trivialize sinful behavior, immoral behavior, immodest behavior, if you are routinely being entertained by watching sins that Christ Jesus died to save us from, you might be lukewarm. If you do not put back what you take, turn off what you turn on, and clean up what you mess up, especially in God's facility, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you expect more of others than you do of yourself, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If your favorite words are me, my, I, if your favorite person is yourself, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you refuse to manage your anger, if you refuse to manage your mouth, if you refuse to manage your behavior, you might be a lukewarm Christian. If when you do wrong, you find it easier to always blame somebody else for your choice, then you might be a lukewarm Christian. If you've been singing the same church songs for decades and still don't know the words, you might be lukewarm. And if you see the clock when we worship, if we see the clock more than we see Jesus, you might be a lukewarm Christian. The babies aren't even crying. Do you notice that? My phone number, 256-483-7022. My email address, jeffabrams at aol.com. Do me a favor. I know that you love me. You know that I love you, and we love God. And we're just trying to help each other. We're just trying to encourage each other. And I would never, never deliberately say anything to offend anybody, much less people that I love as dearly as I love you. But if it is the case that I have said something that was wrong, that offended you. If I have said something in a, a bad attitude, a bad way, legalistic judgment, whatever attitude, I want you to forgive me. And I want you to tell me that. So it will teach me to be better in the future. That's why you have the contact information for me. We're, we're a family. We're a team. And, and I'm obligated to try to help us. You're obligated to try to help us. You're a part of us. I'm a part of us. And so let's do that. Let's do that. Um, I've been... I've been preaching and, and you've been attending a lot of funerals lately. And that reminds us that our time is coming. And I don't want your time to come and, and you get on the other side and there's some issues that crop up 
And one of the reasons some of those issues crop up is because the preacher that you listen to so frequently, he always... He always said what was easy to say. He always said what was easy to listen to. You deserve better from me, from any preacher than that. And I know, in this community, we've got dozens and dozens of opportunities to go worship at other places. And, and those places have good people and good preachers. And I know sometimes it's tempting for us to, well, I don't like his position on this, and so I'm going to go find another person who has a more convenient position. I don't know that that ought to be the test. The test ought to be, is it consistent with God's position? Is it God's will? Is, is this something that will bless my life? I hope that I will always be that kind of preacher for you, for myself, for my family, for those that will come on board in future days with us. I need your help. I need your prayers. I need your forgiveness when I'm not that, as I forgive you when you're not what, what maybe you should be. Uh, heaven's coming. Lukewarm Christians don't get in. That's not my opinion. That's not idle speculation. That's what Jesus said to those Laodiceans in Revelation chapter 3, verses 14, 15, and 16. The original is a lot stronger than these translations that say he will spew the lukewarm out of his mouth. It's much more graphic than spew. The idea is that that, that condition of, of one who is a follower of Jesus, just kind of being a halfway follower, I'm sometimes in, I'm sometimes out, and you really can't count on me to be with you, Christ, every day and in every way. That, that, that kind of attitude, that kind of mentality, it sickens our Savior, and frankly, it ought to, it ought to sicken us. Has there ever been a time in our lives where we analyzed our life and saw that it was lacking in some areas and it literally made us physically nauseated? It ought to. We ought to be sick and tired of ever transgressing any of God's commands or getting within 10 miles of transgressing any of God's commands. You remember getting back to Galatians 5, 19 to 21. It's got that, that list of these works of the flesh and a lot of them are specified and there's no confusion, controversy. And then he says, the, he ends it with the phrase, and such like, it's like these things will, will get you in trouble with God and anything like, anything similar to these things. So, so just stay as far away from this as you possibly can. Otherwise, what? We're in danger. Now and later. And, and we are lukewarm. And what did Jesus tell the Laodiceans who were guilty of lukewarmness? He told them to be zealous. Another word for zealous is to, is to warm up, heat up, fire up again. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Who likes to repent? Nobody ever liked to repent. Nobody likes to change. Change is awkward. It is inconvenient. It is painful. What's the best predictor of future behavior? Past behavior. Why? We don't like to change. So if I examine my life today and I, and I understand, yeah, maybe I am lukewarm in an area. And again, I'm not asking for agreement on all this. I'm just asking for thinking. But if we have thought about it and we we've understand now, maybe I am. Or in fact, I absolutely am certain I've been lukewarm in some areas of my life. What are we going to do with that knowledge? Jesus says, be zealous and repent. Well, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. There aren't any old dogs in here. A leopard can't change his spots. No leopards in here. 
We're people made in the image of God, purchased by the blood of His Son. We can change. We can repent. We can warm up. No reason for lukewarmness. Never, ever. All right, are we okay? Are you and I okay? But most importantly, are you and I okay with God? Let's be sure. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful that in spite of our lukewarmness, that you continue to love us, you continue to challenge us, to repent, to be zealous, to seek forgiveness. I pray, God, that you would help us to do that, starting with me, that you would forgive me, please, of any sins I've committed, anything I've done, not done, that would be an indication of lukewarmness. Help, help me to be a leader, a true leader, in the path that we all should take. Thank you, God, that there are so many other better leaders than me in this congregation, and help us to look towards them. Help us all to step up and be more like them. Help us, Father, to truly put aside anything that can hinder a better relationship with you, a better relationship with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, if there are those who need to confess lukewarmness today and seek prayers, we pray that will happen. If there are those today, Father, who need to confess their belief in Jesus and be immersed in, in the blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins, we pray that will happen. We understand, God, that what we do here and now really will impact where we are in the hereafter. Help us to choose wisely. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. If we can help you in any way.